guys, Chris with Microsoft here again. Um, thought it might be fun to put together a uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager since we've got a new version and new service pack and everything for it. Um, I haven't done this before and we're going to run into some walls. And that's actually kind of what I want to do. I want to start a new type of uh, series. And I've been thinking about this for a while, ever since I did the What's New in Windows Server 2012 stuff, which I've still got a couple more episodes I want to film on that. But um, I want to do something called Let's Tech, sort of like in the Let's Game, uh, or Let's Play, rather, that the gamers do, uh, where we just kind of do something, put it together, and uh, kick at it. Might be something I've done before, might be something I've never done before, but uh, we'll kind of go through it together and see what we come up with. So, um, I remember that there's some pre-installation, uh, I'll talk more about that uh, Let's Tech idea here in a little bit, and you guys let me know what you think, and comment in the comment section on what, what, what you think might be the usefulness of this. Um, I remember there's some prerequisites for doing SCVMM, but I don't remember what they are, so I'm going to go ahead and kick off an install. Uh, I remember that it has to do with the Windows Automated uh, Deployment Kit, or something along those lines. I went ahead and pulled it down so I've got that sitting here. And this uh, server just rebooted so it's being a little slow right at the moment, especially since it's, it's a Hyper-V server. Yeah, this is. This is uh, Contoso Host 1, so it's going to have some little issues with uh, uh, missing uh, prerequisites and VMs are starting to fire up at the same time. and uh, a, lot of, a lot of things going on at once here, so pause for a second while it catches up to the game and looked like it was about to be finished and we've got this pretty little white screen here let me see where I'm bottlenecked in the awesome new Perfmon here so yeah I'd say once again it's disk bound that's what I kind of suspected we were sitting upwards of 4,000 milliseconds there for a second, now it's 1,600. Um, anything over 25 is really, really bad, and we're at <laughs> it times 2,500. 600 is a uh, really slow floppy disk, so this drive is behaving worse than a really poor <laughs> floppy disk drive, and so obviously my, uh, my wonderful little blade server here is... Uh, a little bit stupid today, so I will pause and not torture you with that while I stare at the not responding screen. Ah, there we go. Never mind. Okay, so I need the management server, so we're going to click next. Um, I'm going to next through this for right now, and uh, we'll do that on the next step because it's actually going to uh, fail anyway, so we'll just get to the part where it actually looks for the, this part I'm looking for. Okay, so both the deployment tools and the Windows presentation environment uh, features from the ADK must be installed. Okay, so we need WP, Windows pre-installation environment, and we need the deployment toolkit. Uh, so I did pull those down. I just couldn't remember which ones I needed off of this. So I'll go ahead and kick off that install. This is a free download. And uh, you can get it from this link right here, which is going to fire up on you when you try to install SCVMM, so real easy to get to. Put it in the, I'd say I'm going to put it in the section below the uh, in the description, but I'll just forget, so it's not necessary. Also, just so I don't have two of these running at once, I know it says check prerequisites again. I don't want to run the risk of having the, uh, the two of them running at the same time and collide with each other so all right so we don't need the app compat toolkit or uh, the uh, a lot of these tools that are in here so we don't need performance we don't need the I'm gonna leave the SQL Express on there because I think we need it anyway and uh, don't need USMT the migration tools and we just need the deployment tools and we need the pre-installation environment so Let's just throw those guys on there and see if we can get through it. And I'll pause as we watch this thing kind of do its, its little deal. Kind of 
funny that it's fully pulling down the PE, one PE again, because I pulled down the entire install base, but it's pulling it off the web. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that again, because uh, it's not like there's any new version of Windows PE that it came out in the last 20 minutes, but um, oh well, like I said, I'll just kind of keep pausing off and on here to save you guys from having to watch the green line. Cool, looks like that got done. Had a conference call right in the middle of that. Sort of delayed this process. It didn't actually take the <laughs> amount of time that you probably saw it jump to there. Right on. So, okay, we'll kick off the install again. and We'll be a little bit more deliberate about our uh, Q&A as it uh, goes through the, the screens we saw before. So we're going to want the virtual machine management server. And I'm Chris, and this is Contoso, and I'll have to pause as I put in a uh, product key here for obvious reasons. All right, so yes, I definitely want CEIP. I like that because that helps Microsoft do things better. And we'll turn on Microsoft Update and kick this off. All right, so we don't have the SQL Server command line utilities um, installed on the computer, which is interesting that it didn't come up with the prerequisite for this before. So we have a little bit more we have to do. So let me read this. I haven't seen this install. Command line utilities, blah, 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 from SQL Server pack thingy. So let's grab that, whatever it is, and pull it down as part of this update process. Come on, go. Copy, paste. Go, go, gadget. Copy, paste. And there we are. Download the SQL 2012 feature pack. I'm actually going to bring that down here in case we need to do it again. Throw it out onto the desktop. That's fairly small, so it's already here, it looks like. Whoa. Instructions. What? What did I pull down? Did I pull down the wrong thing? That's hilarious. I pulled down the set of instructions. Mm -hmm. Probably the easiest thing to do is just search for the command. Utilities. There we go. The X64 pack. For real this time. Let's throw it out on the desktop. Another time. Very short. This looks a little bit more like what we're looking for. Uh, except, let's hope that having the existing installer doesn't collide. Doesn't look like it did. So let's check prereqs again. And we have a pending restart on the computer as a result. So I guess we will reboot the computer in the and unpause one. And looks like we're finished with the reboot. I'm doing this on a physical box, so it's taking a little bit longer to um, get through the whole reboot process. So again, just cutting out all the boring parts for you guys. Repause here. Okay, we're back, so let's relaunch the uh, installation. The install actually come, it comes down as an ISO, and <clears throat> with uh, Server 2012, if you've been watching any of my other episodes, comes with the ability to right-click and mount ISOs. So, go ahead and fire this off again, and we'll get back up to the state that we were in before. server. Chris. Pause for the key again. Understand the license. CEIP on Kadok. Prerequisites. Hey, we made it. All right. So 
going to need to set up a database, looks like. So I wonder if we can just do this all kind of generic. Um, obviously, it's going to need to be new, but um, let's just see if it'll take it as is or if it's going to require a service account for the, the database. So I'm trying to, trying to keep this in the simplest possible setup to, you know, out of box, just next, next finish kind of thing. So let's see if it'll swallow those settings or not. Yeah, I didn't like that, so maybe we need to give it an instance name. SQL. Let's see if I got that. I didn't like that either, so let's try it with the uh, credentials filled out. Nope, still don't like it. Maybe we have to create the instant. Okay, bounce the SQL service there real quick. Try again. And I'm not much of a SQL guy, so this type of thing is not exactly my forte, but um, I guess being a non-SQL guy, I'd expect that uh, it would do the setup for me since it did install SQL. So missing something here. Okay, so the SQL server is running. Maybe we should go something crazy here. Um, why not? Yeah. Help if I can type. What I'm doing is, I remember at one point, um, seeing some article or some post, or maybe it was just in the forum internally, where uh, I don't even remember what I said exactly, just something about how um, it needed to be running with a domain account. I don't, I don't doubt that the VSS writer needs anything for backups for it to be able to do that. should turn that on or not. Maybe it needs to be on. I don't know why it wouldn't. I've automatically started something we need. Let's try this again. Maybe we'll get somewhere with it. Nope. Fail again. Hey, what about? Maybe, maybe we'll just use the default instance. Uh, what is that? Uh, M-S-S-Q-L-S-E-R-B-E-R, -E I think. And then let it do, I don't know, let's try it. I probably should undo all the changes that I just did. But this is a throwaway install anyway. So. And we're doing our typical troubleshooting thing. But this is also the kind of thing that a lot of admins get in trouble, right? They beat on something, go eight different directions, they're not doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now. I should be writing all the little changes that I make down so that when we do figure out what the actual problem is, we back up and undo all weirdness and then do the setup and try it without any modifications. That way when you do get it up, you get it running, things are going along, and then you have an epic failure and you can't figure out how to fix it. Um, you don't have a strange install different than what anybody else has. Alright, so Contoso Host 1 sure it can find itself in the directory. I'm sure we're not having some sort of weird domain controller thing. The browse button doesn't seem to be doing Aha! There we go. Check it to check. It found it. So that's fine. Port number should be default. Um, I think 1433. 1433 is the port we actually use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that in there. Wouldn't it be funny if I'm misspelling this because I know nothing of SQL? Sure seems like that's what it is. Can't imagine the port being it. I mean, that's default, right? So you shouldn't have to override the port. Not responding. No, same problem there. I wonder if I can just reuse that ADK. I know that's totally not best practices. It's actually trying to uh, attach to an existing instance. Maybe what happened was since I put ADK on here, I uh, put SQL on here. Nope. Hmm. And without the port number, would probably be better. 
guess. I'm guessing as well. Let's, let's do that. Let's clear off the port number. I I would never do this in a production environment, but we know we've got this ADK instance, and there isn't an MSSQL server on here, which is probably why we can't attach to it. Which, I don't know why I brain fart, I guess. Um, Alright, so just for playing around, let's see. Oh my god, that actually worked. Alright. Um, I have a service account. Oop, whoops. Um, I have a servant. My mouse just died. <laughs> Uh, and I have no batteries here. Now, let's just use the keyboard. Possibly fully intended to intentionally run into some problems during this. <laughs> but troubleshooting dead mouse batteries was not uh, part of that. I always use Kyle. Uh, if you didn't watch my What's New in Windows Server 2012. Stuff in this uh, Contoso environment. I always use Kyle because he's kind of my uh, default hero in my little uh, class, one workshop that I put together for uh, an OEM on uh, learning. 2012, I used Kyle. Is uh, he's my uh, favorite race car driver, Kyle Busch. Okay, distribute a key manager. Let's see. Select whether to store encryption keys in AD instead of the local machine. Highly available VMM installations require them to be an AD. So in other words, if we're going to have two of these, in my case we will not. Um, so we're just going to be local. I just need the one SCVMM. But you know, storing keys in AD, I guess you just give it the, the uh, distinguished name of where you want them to go. So we'll just keep them local for now for ease. Okay, so here's a bunch of ports. I probably should memorize these. So I'm not going to override anything. New library share and install. So the modification of the service account was not necessary, so we wouldn't normally do that. So in your deployment, I wouldn't uh, go to that extreme. Putting the port number obviously got in uh, there, but uh, not having silly brain farts like I did and try to put instance names of uh, SQL Server instances that don't exist to have one that's actually there. If I knew anything about SQL, I'd probably go back and create a separate instance. That would definitely be the better way to do this. But, ah well, who cares? Not like we're going to use ADK's instance for much of anything anyway. Um, and if we have a major collision, then what we could do is uh, spin up a, another little side video and say, hey, if you have this instance, watch this video, and you probably did what I did. All right, so let me let this thing kind of kick along for a while, and I'll unpause when we get to uh, stopping. Cool, looks like it's the first part of it done there. And there's the other shoe dropping. So, final configuration it says. All right, check for the latest VMM updates, and open the console. Website. We'll just use the Windows Update built-in utility, and since it says for Windows and other products for Microsoft Update, that should work just. I'm always a real big fan of patching anything right after you get it installed because I hate beating my head against the wall for hours trying to troubleshoot some weird out-of-box issue, only to find, hey, they found it too two months ago, and there was a patch for it, and I didn't have that patch, so ahead and get this up. Cool, we do have some. Let's see if any of these are relevant. Oh yeah, see, there we go. There's two roll-ups available. Uh, 392 and 405 and just a general server update and an update to SQL Server which is also relevant. This breaks the entire server so we won't be updating that. That's not the correct um, driver for that NIC even though for some reason Windows Update thinks it is. I think it has to do with the BIOS. I can't update the BIOS on this little blade chassis because that causes it to cease communicating with its uh, onboard administrator for some reason. Kind of weird. So let's let it pull down those four up. 
updates and install them, and probably reboot, and then we'll come in and see. We also got our uh, system center connect to the uh, server dialog here. I'm going to go ahead and pen that. Let's see, we're done with the services MSC. We're done with the installer mechanism doohickey. And these, I guess, we can be done with as well. So, Alright, so we'll let that go and move on to the next. Alright, it just finished up, so now it's time to bounce this sucker and I'll bring it back up again. Cool, we're rebooting and I've just clicked our little pinned icon here. So we're just going to log on locally and use my locally logged on credentials as Kyle here. I'll say automatically do that in the future. Click connect. And it looks like we have an error on load. Could not update manage code in pipeline due to the following error. Looks like it's a minor error because the console looks kind of like it loaded there. Um, pipeline store is denied. So something the file system it was trying to get to either wasn't there or it can't access it under these credentials. Let's see if that even, even exists. Let's go check it out here. Alright. So it's program file system center 2012 DMM. It wants the bin folder and the add-in pipe. Oh, okay. Do I have permissions? I do, but only as administrator. So that was a U, uh, a C prompt. Okay, so let's uh, let's just close SCVMM, and we're going to shift right click its little pinned icon. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to say run as admin. That ought to keep that from happening, right? All right. Service pack one. And no error this time. Okay, so clearly SCVMN needs to be run with an administrative token, even though Kyle is an administrator and has local admin rights on this box. Um, we need to be running that. It's probably because I pinned that um, handy little shortcut. I bet if I were to try to launch SCVMN from in here, it automatically tries to do that. But I have to confirm that at another time. Okay, so here we are. We got ourselves a uh, uh, first view for me anyway uh, for System Center Virtual Machine Manager and my understanding is we can put in uh, vSphere boxes on here and Hyper-V boxes and they can live together uh, which is not chaotic with uh, dogs and cats living together type of thing yeah, it's supposed to work quite well I don't have any uh, VMware servers in my environment anymore I used to be a VCP and it used to be uh, able to answer even rudimentary questions about the uh, system or the uh, uh, vCenter server and, and uh, vSphere and stuff but I've kind of been away from that for gosh more than three years now so don't have that in my environment but we'll add in some uh, we'll add in some servers here so we'll start here with this all hosts and add a Hyper-V host and clusters and oh look we can do a Citrix N server too Cool. So all the three major big 800-pound gorillas in the room here. I know there's uh, there's also the one that is uh, <coughs> based on Red Hat, but it doesn't look like that's one of the ones we can do. Okay, Windows Server computers and a trusted Active Directory domain, and so <coughs> looks like we have the capability to dump in Hyper-V hosts that are on this domain. Um, or in another domain that is not trusted, which is cool because I actually have some Hyper-V servers in uh, the 9Z domain. So this will be kind of neat. Maybe I can uh, uh, maybe I can add in some from the Contoso domain and the and the Windows domain. <coughs> Uh, perimeter network and physical computers to be provisioned as virtual machine hosts. So what we're talking about there uh, to do bare metal computers with baseboard management controllers it says. So oh you know what that is. That's the new feature where we can actually take an unprovisioned uh, Windows server and uh, install Hyper-V on it and set it up from scratch. And we have uh, Blade Chassis 
that I might be able to do that with later. So we'll see. Let's start off with just the simple one. Let's, let's throw in something from um, uh, from this domain. So we'll run as Kyle. I'm guessing this is what we need to do. Oh, we can manually enter the credentials right here. That'd be the better way to do this. Toes of Kyle. Oh, if I pass, put the right password in here. And since this is this domain, um, ooh, specify Active Directory query to search for Windows computers, or specify by name. And so, computer names will start off with Contoso, host one. And it says enter the computer names. Each computer must be on a separate line. So Contoso host one, Contoso host two, Contoso host three, and I have uh, do I have Hyper-V on host four? I don't remember. These are uh, 08R2 boxes. Those are the Hyper-V virtual machine, uh, uh, Hyper-V boxes in my environment, I think. So let's see if it can actually verify those. So I see a little circle-y thing going here. It says it discovered these. There's little check boxes here by a few of them. So 2012, 2012, it found three R2s, 08R2. Oh, it found Contoso Cluster 3. So apparently it can manage a uh, cluster as well. So what does the checkbox mean? Oh, because these 4 and 5 are actually in a high available cluster, um, it looks like you need to add it in as a, the cluster, not the actual individual hosts, which is interesting because I didn't, I don't think I've actually got any high available VMs on that, but let's take a look real quick. Let's look at uh, 4. Uh, this is uh, Contoso host 4. So let's take a little look and see if I've got any high available virtual machines. I might as well kick on five here as well. We'll get them all kind of booted up and logged in real fast. All right, there we go. So let's get the 08R2 failover cluster manager fired up here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the Hyper-V configuration as well. So Hyper-V failover cluster. All right, so there are no VMs on host four, but we have a failover cluster with the four and five R nodes. Okay, what services do we have? We have no high available virtual machines. And looking at five, I want to see if he's got any virtual machines as well. So this is Contessa host five. Let's just open one copy of that, please. Shush, shush. The manager, Contessa host five. Okay, cool. So yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and add the cluster itself. Just uh, come in here later maybe and rip that back out and add them individually just so that we can see the different ways that clusters look. So clicking next. Now it looks like we get to group things and it looks like there is a host group called all hosts by default which makes sense. And it looks like if we had another SCVMM instance and we wanted to move the hosts that we're adding here from being managed on that SCVMM box over to this one. We could do that here. Obviously, this is the first implementation for me ever of SCVMM because I'm not a system center guy, but I am a Hyper-V guy, so <laughs> I need to get to know this sucker a little bit. Okay, so live storage migration. So how many uh, storage migrations can we do simultaneously? Storage migration obviously is moving the VM, the VHD or VHDX file from one drive to another, one location to another. Um, that is turned on by default on uh, 2012, and looks like you can. Uh, oh, and it's also set to two automatically, so it looks like SCVMM follows that model. It also says uh, we can do live migrations here, so those are not turned on by default. On 2012, and um, you have to tell it, well, how are you going to uh, authenticate with these? So, in this case, that's kind of important if I start adding things from other domains, right? So, we might want to actually use in, uh, in a just vanilla environment where we have nothing but Contoso hosts glued to my SCVMM instance. We could just use Curb, uh, but 
since the 9z domain does not trust the Contoso domain, and we're going to add some of those in as well, or at least one in from 9z. Uh, we may need to put together a, a, a certificate type of setup here and uh, put a chain together where we've got some trust. So for for starters, let's say use curb, and then I'll switch that here in a little bit to uh, now. Let's use uh, PKI and use any network because I really only have one network right now. So finish. So what will have to happen is I will have to, uh, since I don't have a trust between 9Z and um, the Contoso network, and I can't make one because the Contoso network is a, a kind of a vanilla setup, but the 9Z network has actually still got an SBS server in it, meaning that I can have as many domain controllers as I want, but I cannot have any kind of trust to another domain, which has caused me to do some interesting workarounds in the past, and this is going to be one of those times. So what we'll probably end up doing is setting up a way for 9Z to trust uh, Contoso and vice versa just using a certificate. Um, and adding these certificates to the uh, trusted uh, yeah, the trusted certificate store. So, looks like this is not really doing much of anything. Show this windows when new objects are created. I must be thinking right now. So, let's see. aha, there we go. So, <clears throat> there was a drop down. So by default, I wasn't seeing anything going on. So. Uh, it looks like Contoso Host 2 failed to get added, Contoso Host 1 failed to get added, and Contoso Host 3, looks like everybody pretty well failed. We were able to create the cluster and discover the cluster nodes, and yeah, pretty well everything we did failed, looks like, except for this because it hasn't finished yet, so we'll get to troubleshoot that a little bit now. So we'll select one and see, looks like it's got a drop down to tell me what the error is. This is kind of a funky little interface, isn't it? But it's it's functional. So this discover worked. Refresh co completed with info. Add machine. So let's just start with host one and see what its problem is. Add virtual machine host, drop this down. Uh, specified user account can't be the same as the VMM service account. Specify a different account and try the operation again. Okay, so because I used Kyle to set this up, apparently it's ticked off about that. So let's see, where did I make that change? There's pending, pending. Maybe if I remove this and just say. Did it did a C O N T O S O Kyle Kyle and let's remove this using his account that works. So let's add the hosts again. Add Hyper-V hosts and clusters. And let's switch over to the DC and let's go into yeah, ADS I added. Awesome. Let's instead go in here and let's say new user and Let's say we're going to call this SCVMM. SA. CVMM SA. And let's go password. And password never expires. And just for trouble blasting purposes, rather than doing any good troubleshooting um, in the interest of time, let's go ahead and admin. We'll come back later, find out what he really needs, and give him only what he really needs. Let's go back over to the wrong server. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, so again, trusted server computers in a trusted Active Directory domain. We're going to manually enter this as Contoso uh, SCVMMSA and password. And next. So this one, it's cheap. Control C. Enter. Contoso host two. Contoso host three. Contoso host four. And Contoso host five. And next, let it search and validate all those names. Check all these boxes and say next. All hosts reassociates not necessary. Next and. 
two and turn on and let's curve. Yeah, let's keep with the certificates and finish. All right. Let's go back to our status screen. So we've got uh, some more jobs going here. That seemed to go a little quicker that time. So we'll pause while it thinks about it. And that one completed with info right here. So let's see what its info has. Warning, multipath IO is not enabled. Uh, that's totally cool. If you want to provision storage using VMM, enable multipath for storage arrays being used on the host manually after yes. Well, we have local drives and no shared storage in this scenario. So we will not need any multipath. So this one failed, Contos host four, but we did get some in there, so we're making progress, right? Another machine with the same SMBIOS GUID is found. SMBIOS. Be unique. Please provide the correct value and contact the manufacturer to help update the hardware the correct. Boy, that's kind of weird. Let's see who else fails with that error, and that should tell us who has that. Katosa has four and five. So it, it clearly host four and five. We uh, have some funky thing going on in the BIOS there, so I have a good idea of how to quickly get around that. Actually, we can just not add the 08R2 boxes now. Plan is to actually nuke those servers and put them to 08 or 2012 rather. Anyway, uh, so that's not a big deal for me. I also tear down the cluster and just add one of the two of them here. But we've got three good. Um, Hyper-V hosts in our little cluster now, so Contosa host 1, that's this guy, and Contosa host 2, host 3, and then the cluster itself, which none of these guys have any VMs at all, so no worries there. I do find it a little odd that we're not seeing any VMs listed, so let's see, right, uh, there's a refresh virtual machines, let's see if that does anything. It does not. Hmm, all of these have virtual machines. That is kind of interesting. Okay, well, we found one on Contosa Host 3. He's got two, I believe. One of them is my Windows 8 um, box. And hey, look, it found, it found the other one. So I guess it's in the middle of populating all of these right now. So we'll give it time to think about it. And I go to all hosts, and look, there's a bunch of VMs. Awesome, so cool. We've got several VMs now appearing in our view. Uh, click and see. Okay, so we can pretty much do anything we could from the uh, view if I was just looking at actual Hyper-V. So they're calling them checkpoints instead of uh, snapshots, I guess. Oh, that's kind of nice. Connect via console or connect it via RDP. View its networking uh, properties. Let's do that. Okay, cool. So the Contosa.com is actually the name of the VM network on that one, so that's that's why you're seeing that. It also looks like it. Yeah, it looks. It also looks like it might be super easy to migrate these around from one. Let me kind of expand this out so I can tell which one I'm actually looking at. So like if I wanted to take RMS, which is currently pull these out where I can actually see them. What are these columns? Availability set name. Yeah, I don't need that right now, clearly. Uh, but let's say that I want to take that from host two and move it to host one. We could migrate the virtual machine here using the wizard. So again, with 2012, you could do this on Hyper-V pretty easily. So make this VM highly available. Oh man, there's all kinds of cool stuff we can do on this. Um, let's see if I can add a Hyper-V host from the uh, the uh, nine, uh, from the 9Z domain and see how that works. 
Okay, so the approved run as account should be a local administrator on the host machine. It will be used while adding the host as well as for providing future access to the host during its lifetime. Oh, okay, so I was anticipating being asked to use a 9Z account, but it actually is going to need a local account to do that. So uh, that shouldn't take... Just open an RDP connection here to that guy. There we are. All right, so this is... This is a uh, Hyper-V server that exists in the 9Z domain. So let's go. Computer management's already running, thankfully. So let's see. We'll just need to create a local configuration here. Local users. So new user. The local box. You know what, for fun, no, let's not do that. Um, maybe just to make me not wonder later why I was doing this, because I'll forget. We'll call this Contoso, C-O-N-T-O-S-O, uh, S-A, on this side. So this is a different uh, domain. It's 9Z, but we're just modifying the local uh, account store here. So give it a password. And we don't want to have to make that. So password never expires. And my guess is going to be that this is going to need to be a uh, an administrator. In 2012, there's actually a, a type of a group called a Hyper-V administrator. And this is not 2012. So thus, we'll do this. To so locations on Hyper-V itself. Say, okay, is now an administrator. So back to host one. So let's run as create a run as account. So we'll call this S O S A. T-O-S-O-S-A and let's uh, I don't think I need to put the uh, the machine name there and then backslash uh, slash. no okay so it says use domain or local user well okay so this really kind of leads me to believe that I could have used a 9z account here to do this but uh, well we went through all that so let's see we'll validate the domain credentials it does appear to have done some magic there so next and we're going to go to hyper v dot 9z 9z dot it come on local and edit see if I can find it access was denied make sure it's got admin privileges on 9z local all right, so why did you make me use a local account if you're telling me to give me something that's got uh, admin? Maybe you can't actually do a domain connect to computer in that fashion. Let's try. Let's try this. Let's um, go back to the credentials tab and let's try a different run as account. So we'll call this Chris, and this is 9Z Chris, and we'll put in my password. see if it can do that. Can't validate. Oh, well, yeah, because it doesn't know how to get to that. Um, so that is what it's going to pass over, though. So let's see if it tries to go to hyperv.9z.local using mine. And there, there we go. Okay, so it was uh, telling me use a local account. However, we did use a domain account. Let's see if it'll add it. Get back where we can see jobs running here. Adding a non trusted domain. Can't leave that. Host. I'm sure all of these nice little columns fit a lot better when you aren't scrunching things into a uh, easy to fit YouTube window. I've got the screen resolution on these servers set uh, in my remote desktop connection manager. 
window so it's probably on a full screen is going to look a lot better all right well it came completed and it came with a completed with info type of uh, message looks like it's refreshing vms and stuff over there so let's see what the message was that's just the multipath message again and looks like we did refresh the vms so cool Awesome. All right, so now I'm seeing some of the 9Z stuff, like uh, Lisa, my wife, she has a, uh, a uh, P to V, I guess it's a verb, <laughs> a P to V uh, Vista box that uh, I have sitting out here. She's still decommissioning some of the programs and pulling stuff off of it, so uh, rather than tie up the machine, which was making funky noises and I had a feeling that the drive or the power supply or something was getting ready to go out and we just kind of ripped it into the cloud. Now she can still access her PC from her laptop, which is the only place she actually got to it from anyway. So it's sitting out there. The SPS server that I was telling you about is a VM, and it's sitting on that Hyper-V host, and so it found it. And cool. So now we can see, and it looks like it's still doing some uh, some refreshes, but we can see uh, a lot of... Uh, details about things from multiple different domains all kind of bottled up into one place here so a, uh, a fairly elementary setup of uh, SCVMM and you know it may have taken me a little longer than uh, it would have taken you to put this together if you've uh, got faster hardware <laughs> you wouldn't probably have to have uh, uh, paused this near as many times but uh, anyway I try to think of a couple of neat jobs a couple of things that we could do from from this but most most of my goal I just want to do a let's tech episode on setting up and configuring SCVMM and kind of get a peek at what the interface looks like so okay so this is kind of cool um, under the fabric I guess we call it a tab um, we select the various hosts and they'll tell you things like how many VMs are running on it, what their status is, what the operating system is, what kind of processor, how much RAM you've got. Uh, this is something I've been managing on a uh, spreadsheet up until now, so <laughs> uh, this might be a little bit easier for me to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. This is kind of cool. This is kind of I'm kind of a fan. Everybody's told me, hey, you know, you work with Hyper-V a lot. You even teach workshops where we cover Hyper-V features, uh, but I've always stayed away from System Center uh, because in the role I'm at, at Microsoft, I'm a Premier Field Engineer, actually up until a month ago I was, I'm now Microsoft Consultants uh, Services, but um, in any case, either of those two jobs of platforms, and I worked in platforms at Dell prior to uh, moving over to the Microsoft side of the world and I work strictly on platforms over there not not exchange not systems management none of that stuff so I've kind of just never really picked up SCVMM so that's why I wanted to let my first let's tech to be this uh, so anyway getting off topic so this is kind of cool I can see how much storage I've got used I don't see anything about how much is available um, on that but it looks like we've we've used about a terabyte of storage here and that seems a little odd because let's look at the word this is the box we're on and we have 866 gigs free of 931 gigs so sorry pause that so you guys don't have to listen to this silly clock dinging in the background um, I don't believe that I have used 996 gigs of storage here <laughs> from the look of things anyway so uh, it looks like we've we've used at best uh, 70 or 80 gigs so I think this is just should be labeled maybe storage not storage used so let's let's test that theory what Contoso host 3 it's showing 81.86 gigs of storage used uh, let me go to host 3 and let's log it on and see what's even on that sucker alright so this is 67 and 68 gigs uh, so it looks like I got a couple of uh, drives that I put in this one and then going back over to host 1 so I'll, I'll need to figure that out it looks like it's actually calculating about the correct amount of storage that's been used on it but uh, I can tell how much RAM it's got, how many VMs are on them, and it looks like if I click on it, ah, cool, yes, it'll take me straight to the virtual machines 
So that's a neat tab to have just for organization uh, purposes for sure. Let me look at what it's pulling from Hyper-V. Yeah, so for AMD, 24 gigs of RAM. Looks like we've used about two terabytes of storage there. Total disks. Liking it. Okay, I'll need to learn how to read the interface. So that's kind of a neat tab to have for sure. Oh, it looks like uh, in addition to looking at servers, yeah, we also have networking. So we can see the various networks that we have. Oh, okay, so logical networks. Oh, okay, so there's the 9Z, the Contoso.com, external, external Broadcom, who owns them, etc. And we also have the storage broken up. Classification and pools, providers, arrays, file servers. Uh, yeah, I don't actually have any of the storage provisioned apparently in the way that it's looking for it, otherwise, it'd be showing us something. But kind of a neat little organization tab there under that fabric. I might move over here to the library tab. Looks like this is where we could build templates. That's the main reason I'm actually doing this. I need I need badly to have templates because I need to stop with the having to manually provision these um, uh, VMs all the way up just when I want to do like I was wanting to do an RMS thing, um, and that took hours. I want to do a PKI thing that took hours just because I needed to get a server up, get it patched, get it up and and uh, running, and then. Uh, you know, finally getting to the part where I could manage the server and do what I needed to do it was taking too long, so I wanted to learn this SCVM so I could throw some templates together. And uh, this is obviously where we're going to be able to do that. So, in a, another episode, though, what I want to do uh, eventually is I want to get to the part where I can do this part. And if I figure it out, I will have another episode specifically for that. I want to add a Hyper-V host using a physical computer. I want to do this where I can roll out, um, you know, push to a blade chassis and just totally nuke and pave and have a um, brand new uh, Hyper-V host come up in this little cluster of mine. So obviously to do that, we have to have a config profile. So you'll see that it says provisioning physical computers and Hyper-V host requires the existence of host profiles. So if I ever get that working and I figure it out, I'll do another episode on that. But I think this is probably enough just to do and kind of do a, uh, you know, a uh, let's tech getting the uh, SCVMM up and running. Uh, so that's probably where I'll end this. So anyway guys, this has been Chris with Microsoft and as always, thanks for watching. If you did find anything about this useful or interesting, please give me a quick like if you would and feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel. My blog also is at uh, 9z.com. It's really easy to remember. It's just the last number and the last letter dot com. That's got links to my Facebook, my, my uh, LinkedIn, my Twitter. Uh, so again, thanks a ton for listening and I'll see you guys in the next episode.